Speaking of things I like, I absolute one of our favorite guests, the go-to guy when we've got questions about anything having to do with Photoshop. You just, you got to love him, Burt Monroy. He is back once again. How's the book doing? It's doing really good. What's really the name really of good. it? Photoshop Studio with Burt Monroy. I like to give it a plug right up front. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Beautiful cover. You can get that on Amazon.com. Yep. Yep. In fact, you're linked every time I go to Amazon and look at my book. It says, books others have bought that have bought your book? Burt Monroy. We're linked. We're so what are we going to do today? Linked. Well, the last time I was here, you asked to, to know about alpha channels. Yeah. We did layers last we time, which layers. are a key ingredient in Photoshop. Exactly. Then there's this thing called alpha channels. Alpha channels. Now, that is not in the Photoshop elements. It's not in the inexpensive no. one. It's a high-end no. feature, it's and that's maybe feature. why it spooks me a little bit. It's been there from the beginning. In fact, it's alpha channels are not new. They, they were invented by uh, Alvy Ray Smith and C Ed Catmull years before the Mac or Photoshop was around. Is it a so, computer thing? It's a computer thing. It's a, it's a basically an opacity mask so that you can do compositing so that when you went, bring one image into another, there is something that defines the boundaries of that image so that you can see the other thing behind it. Kind of like tracing paper? Kind of like tracing paper. It's, it's a mask. It's like a, kind of like a stencil, you might say. All right. Show us uh, how it would be used. Well, let me explain to you first what the, what the channels are. Okay. Okay. Every Photoshop file has 24 channels available to it. Now, when you look right here in the channels palette, we see we have the red, the green, and the blue. Those are every picture in the world has red, green, and blue. Red, That's green, and part blue. of the computer thing. And it could be a CMYK, at which time there would be four channels. Cyan, so cyan magenta, magenta, yellow, black. Yeah, okay. Now, since we're using up three, that means we have 21 channels left over. <laughs> now, each one of these channels is an 8-bit channel. It goes from zero, which is black, to 255, which is white. 256 different levels. levels. Right. Okay. Now, keeping that in mind, the combination of the three channels together, three times eight is 24, and there's your 24-bit color. Got it. Now, the other channels are also 8-bit channels. Okay. But what they are, they are masks. So eight. it's eight, it's 256 levels of opacity? Of opacity, or actually, well, we're going to see how it's actually used. Okay. But they are opacity. Now, okay. when you or select something. Or transparency, depending on your point yeah. of view. Half Let's see it right now. Here. Okay. When I select something like that, now you know that that area is segregated from the rest of the image, so I can paint, and it'll only paint in that you area. Paint within the right? mask. Yep. Now, if I save selection, I come over here and I say save selection. Okay. It's going to save it. I can name it. I'm just going to click OK, which will automatically call it alpha one. There it is. See? Alpha okay. one. Now, you notice that the area that was selected is white. Yeah. That means that that area is completely exposed. Okay. The rest is black. Okay. That area is protected. Got it. Okay. Now, I said it's an 8-bit channel, so let's just say we went in here and say, feather this. Let's give it a nice big feather of, say, 20. Click OK, which means the edges are now soft, okay. right? In fact, it, it looks the uh, little marching ants are kind of got rounded got corners. Right. Okay. Save selection, and I'm going to save it over the exact same channel. I'll just say, save it right over alpha 1. Click OK. Now you'll notice. Oh, it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy. Oh. Because it has grade levels. It has 256 levels got of gray. Got it. So it so, goes from pure white to pure black through the levels of gray. Exactly. Got it. Now, it's a reusable mask. Now, when I had uh, something selected here, I could also go in there, and when I say save selection, you'll notice that I could send it to a new file. Uh -huh. So I can, in essence, have thousands of alpha channels, uh -huh. which are crucial because let's just say you have a blue sky and you select it with the magic wand. Right. And you change it to another color. Right. And then you take it to your client, say, and the client says, well, I don't like that. I want some clouds in there. Right. Well, now it's a little harder to select it because you added some kind of a gradient to something in there, or maybe you put some other clouds in there. But if you have the alpha channel, it's a reusable mask. So you can immediately call it up. Can you just give me one way that you might use this? Well, that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay. Now, you see this tree here? This is very similar to the tree that was in that first book that I wrote, right? Yeah. Now, here's the shadow, and it's in its own little layer right there. So there's layers, and we've seen that before. Right. Now, that shadow is okay, except in reality, if a shadow is being pushed away, the farther it gets away from the source that's casting the shadow, it's going to start to get softer. It should be out of focus. A little, a little fuzzy. more fuzzy and a little stretched and out. Stretched, okay. So the thing is that I want that to happen out here on the right yeah. and become less and less and not happen at all behind the tree. Uh -huh. okay. So here's a case where I have to apply a filter, but I wanted to do it gradually. Yes. And the only way to do that is through a specialized mask. So in my channel, and here we go to the channel over here, all my tools work. They don't work in color because there's no need for color here. Okay. So I'm going to throw in a gradient, right? Of course, oh, you can like do that. a grayscale gradient. A grayscale gradient. Okay. Now, now how come it went all the way across? Didn't it? Go, why didn't it just go in that little mask area? Because it wasn't. Uh, I didn't have anything selected. Oh, okay, okay, so I got I just it. Okay, totally okay. covered it. Got it. So where it's white, it's going to happen. Now let's see it in, on top of the RGB, which is going to show up red. 
Right. That, you can specify what color you want to okay. see. That's just to see it. See this area? That's where it's white, which means that's where my filter is going to work. Got it. This area back here behind the tree is where it's black, which means it'll be left alone. You haven't applied it yet, but you're going to apply now a blur, right. and it'll be maximum on the left and minimum on the right. Right. Now I'm going to go in here and load this. I can load in so many ways. I can uh, load it by clicking down here, come up here and say load selection. Okay. See, right here, which is the way to do it if the, the alpha channel happens to be on another file. Okay, got it. So I go in here and I'll say which channel? Channel one and go. Now, you notice the marching ants are from the middle of the page over? Yeah. Because the marching ants indicate what's selected. Okay. I have a gradient select. So what it does is it chooses the 50% point and moves it over to the, the white. middle. Which is why I'm seeing it like that. Okay. Now, Do I want to extend that or is that okay? No, because that's about the midpoint where I want that's I want where you all want my it effect to be. to be over there on the far I got left. It. Okay. So now I go and get my filters here, and the filter that's going to give me the stretching effect that I want is one of the blur filters, the motion blur. That okay. guy's perfect for this. So going straight across, and let's look at it back there. As I start to increase the distance, you'll see that. Oh, yeah. See how there it is. It looks like it's speeding away from you. Right. So I click OK. Great. And when I deselect, you see that on the far left, you see the application of the filter. It's nice and blurred, whereas it gets closer to the tree, it becomes less and less as it goes through different levels of so gray. So it's gradual. It's blurry it's gradual. to crisp right, right across. And so you could do the same thing with contrast or whatever else you wanted. Any, anything, any effect. Filter, whatever it is that you want to do. In fact, uh, let's just go in here and I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll flatten this file. So the key is to make a mask. That, then in this case, you apply a gradient across the mask and mm -hmm. then apply the effect using the alpha channel to the picture as a whole. Yeah, I applied a filter before. In this case, I'm just going to hit delete, the delete key. See? Oh, got deleted got on it. the left, left alone but on the right. But not as much on the middle. Yes. And the middle, based on the Look level of gray, 50% gray, 50% deletion. Very cool. You're going to be at Photoshop World next week? Yeah. I'm going to be. Tell I have us about that. Sessions. What are you doing? Three I sessions. have uh, one session called Painting with Photoshop 7. Okay. Then I got another one called The Art of Brush Making, which is kind of like the second chapter of my, uh, my current book. And the third session is called Bending Things a Bit, which is like the third chapter, oh, rather the eighth chapter of my book. Those people are lucky. They get to sit at the feet of the master. I tell you, we're lucky oh, to have shucks. you. It is so much fun. And if people have questions for Bert Monroy, they can email you, right? At Bert, at BertMonroy.com, yeah. That's the website as well, BertMonroy.com. And don't forget the great new Photoshop book just came out as well. And that is called, let's see a picture of it. There it Photoshop. Is. I'm powerful too, you know. Yeah, I do that with Alpha channels. Photoshop Studio with Bert Monroe. And, and a new website is almost done. Almost yeah, done. Yeah, you say that every time I know, you're here. It's getting real you're close. You're busy, I know. Hey, what are you hey thanks, Bert. It's really great to have you. Always, always a real fun experience and a learning experience. Today